Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How's it going? Good. The lunch was good? Amazing. Yeah? You're not going to sleep during our presentation because the lunch was too good? <laughs> yeah. I would understand. <laughs> the food was really good. So, uh, my name is Frederick Harper. Uh, you can call me Fred. I'm a technical evangelist at Mozilla, so I'm part of the paid staff. Uh, I'm still Mozillian, but uh, it's just because my job is uh, working at Mozilla. So, as a technical evangelist, you probably all know what my job is to, uh, I like to say that my job is to give love to developers. This is really my job. It's to uh, help developers being successful with Firefox OS mostly, so with web technology, but I have a focus around Firefox OS and uh, doing presentation at user groups, conferences, helping developers if they have an issue with Firefox OS. But I'm not alone today. Janet? Hello. I'm Hello. Janet Swisher. Some of you know me. Um, I'm a community manager for developer relations, so I try to make it easy for volunteers to get involved and make them want to stay involved uh, for both evangelism and the MDN uh, project. Um, and we're going to be talking about both of those aspects today and some other things that you may not know about that are also part of developer relations and, and are things that you can uh, participate in. But I just want to get a general sense of um, who here is a developer? Okay, good. <laughs> because generally in talking to developers you need to be able to speak their language. So if there was somebody here who was like, no, I just kind of want to know, but I don't know anything about programming, that person actually, this might not be the best session for them, but we're, we're good. Um, how many people are here because they're really interested in uh, going out and doing public speaking at conferences and events? Okay. How many people are here because they're really interested in MDN and documentation and... Okay. We can adjust our time based on that information. So. Good. But we're not alone. We, we have uh, two amazing people, uh, local people from the community, so if you want to present yourself. Because I know everybody knows you, but again, just, just to be sure. Yeah, so that is Priyanka. Uh, <laughs> this is Priyanka. Uh, and this is Nikki Costa. So we'll probably just barge in whenever you guys don't understand it. <laughs> and they're, they're helping us with this because they have run events like the ones that we're going to talk about in India and give us their experience with it. Good. So uh, last but not least, um, this session is not going to be the end of what we're going to do with you guys. So feel free to connect with us on Twitter. Uh, I'm also open and I will let Janet say if it's good for her or not, but on Facebook or whatever, any places you would like to connect to. One small announcement. So we have the BOF starting 5.15 down at the ballroom. So one of the tracks proposed on BOF is the DevRel. So if you have any question which doesn't get answered here, feel free to discuss it. Or if you know somebody who is interested in this but is not able to come to either of the DevRel sessions, tell them to come to the Birds of a Feather for DevRel. And it, it won't be the same as doing this whole thing, but that they can at least get some questions answered. And last but not least, before we start, uh, if you look at the link at the bottom, out of comfortzone.net, this is my personal blog. Uh, I'm going to put the slides online so you don't have to take notes of <coughs> things that are on the slides. We'll also put a recording of that session so the audio will be kind of okay but you will still get uh, the big picture if you want to look at something after a shirt with friends so that's going to be online probably uh, Monday or Tuesday mm -hmm. worst case hmm? yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks thanks so uh, I wanted to start with this uh, I hope uh, are you speaking Canada here no, no. nobody's speaking so I totally lost like I use Google Translate. I tried to learn how to say this. It was just not working. So okay. Can you still say that? Yeah. Okay. I tried. At least I tried. So the first thing I want you to do before uh, we even start, really start the session, is to go to that link. Uh, this is an Etherpad. So uh, it's uh, hamzl.la-mozcam event for evangelists. 
And um, I would like you to put your name and email uh, in that either pad for the simple reason that we want to keep in touch with you. Uh, we also have a mailing list that we're going to talk about a little bit later. But the idea is really because you're here, it's probably because you have an interest in sharing uh, what I call the Firefox love, the Firefox awesomeness. So the good thing around Firefox OS, you want to know uh, how you can help us. You want to know how you can help Mozilla, how you can help uh, Firefox OS. That to, URL uh, is be not working. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's down. I just used it to test it before. Oh, because Capital it's e. working for me. Yeah, yeah, it's case sensitive. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. So all the trip pad uh, usually is case sensitive. Oh, okay, so, so it's capital E for it's you. Capital E. Yeah. Okay. Because my fault. My fault. <laughs> There's a capital E. So go there, it's simple, just uh, enter your name, your email. We're not going to spam you, we're going to do two things. We're going to uh, thank you by email to uh, trying to help us. And uh, there is a mailing list that we're going to talk about a little bit later uh, that you will probably want to join. So is everybody got the link with a capital E? Yes. 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 <laughs> and when I copy paste the link, it was working. <laughs> Good. Yeah, right now people are racing to put it <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. So uh, I want to start. I know uh, how many of you like know Firefox OS on the developer side, not just the platform, not just as a user, but as a developer. So kind of uh, nearly half the room. So I'm not going to go too deep. <coughs> About what is Firefox OS because you're going to be able to learn about it. We have great documentation, we have great videos online. I'm going to be there to help you. Today, the session is more high level stuff. It's really how you can help Firefox OS to reach more people, to reach more developers, to help us to enable developers to be successful in the platform. So, uh, basically, why Firefox OS? Uh, there is many, many people that have access to the internet today. It's pretty good, but there is a lot more people that don't have access to the web. And when we think about the web, uh, most of those people don't use computers. There's a lot of people that just have a smartphone. And I know some, some of those people, they're on Facebook, they tweet, they uh, look on the web for the scores, for their, their preferred sport, but they all do this on a smartphone device. They don't have any computer. So we talk that it could be a good idea to offer a smartphone to those people, that would uh, be an opportunity for them to access the web. So basically, why Firefox OS? Uh, the idea is that uh, there is many devices available out there. But uh, those devices, they're not really cheap. They're really usually expensive. Uh, it's pretty good for some people. Some people have the money to buy those devices. And some people don't have the money to buy those devices. So what we think is that it would be great to create an OS that would be on entry level device phone. That would be really inexpensive. So right now, most of the devices we have out there, except uh, excepting the new flame, uh, you can buy those for about 100 bucks. So I don't know how many 100 dollar uh, main so are six thousand. Five six thousand. So yeah, it's, it's pretty. 60, yeah. 600. Yeah, so it's it's really not expensive when it uh, when it comes to uh, smartphone, and this is a full-fledged smartphone. You have all the features you want in those devices. Uh, we also wanted to create something using the open web, using the web technology HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So it's really great for developers. It's not it's great for users because they are in the control of their information, they are in the control of the platform they use, but it's great for developers also because they can use technology they know. We wanted to create something open source also. So you can go on GitHub, you're gonna have access to the source code of Firefox OS. So really good, it's not just good for developers, it's also good for users because uh, they know that there is a many, many, many people that look at the code, that contribute to the code, and there's a lot more chance that that's going to be secure. There's a lot more chance that those bugs or new features will be implemented more quickly. So most of you raised their hand when we asked if you're there to like starting to do public speaking. 
So that's not going to be a course, that's not going to be a presentation about how to do like public speaking from A to Z, but I'm going to tell you how to talk about Firefox OS to the audience. So I know, I don't know for you, uh, if you were here previously, Christian Elman, I think, or Robert Kleiman a couple of months ago, came here to do a session about really the, uh, the structure behind public speaking, what are the good things, what are the things that you can change, what are the bad things, the things you shouldn't do when you're doing public speaking. So uh, this part's really going to be about Firefox OS. So when you talk to developers about Firefox OS, what are the key messages that we need to talk, we need to tell them, we need to tell them? Do you have, do you have any idea? What are the key points? If I want to talk about Firefox OS to developers, so we saw some presentation today, it was mostly for the users, we talked about the marketplace, we talked about, hey, there's a cool option, there's everything.me, uh, there's some application, it's cool smartphone, it's inexpensive, but this is also great for developers. But as developers, I want to know what is that platform, how can I use that platform, what can I build for that platform? So is there any key point that you would think about uh, if you want to talk to developers about Firefox OS? Right ones deployed mostly everywhere. Yeah. yeah Good. Like, and it's completely based on like web technology. So completely based on web technology. So ease of access for the easy ease of access. You don't have to learn a new stack. You don't have to learn a new stack. Yeah. It's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Right. And this is pretty nice because the only thing we had on top, we had uh, some API that we call web APIs, but it's still HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I don't have to learn a new language. If I want to build for iOS, I need to learn Objective-C, at some point probably Swift, uh, the new language. Uh, if I want to build for Android, I need to learn Java. If I want to build for Windows Phone, I need to learn C Sharp. So uh, with Firefox OS, it's basically HTML. So those are really good points. Uh, let me tell you which kind of key messages that I'm uh, presenting when I talk about Firefox OS. So uh, the first point, it seems obvious because it's Firefox OS, but I want to emphasize the fact that Mozilla is behind Firefox OS. And as I said, it seems obvious, but I always want to emphasize that point because it's really important. Because whether those developers use Firefox, use any product we have, uh, even, if you, even if they don't like Firefox and they prefer to use Chrome, they prefer, prefer to use IE or any other browser out there, they still know that Mozilla is not there to making profit. They still know that Mozilla is a non is a nonprofit. That Mozilla is there to open the web to more people. That they can trust Mozilla. So that set the tone about the platform. You can trust that platform because Mozilla is behind Firefox OS. So it's really, it's, as I said, I will do. I will say it again. It seems obvious, but it's really important to emphasize that point to uh, talk about that point again. This is so important. HTML, CSS, JavaScript. HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. We're talking about the latest and the greatest technology. So when you talk to developers, talk about those things. Talk about just what you said. Hey, do you know web technology? Do you already use HTML, CSS, JavaScript? Yes. Do you know how to code Firefox OS application? Of course. It's a little bit more complex than that. You need to learn about manifest file. You need to learn about those web APIs. But still, you are ready to create Firefox OS application. Does that make sense? Yes? Not sure? Yeah, the launch is starting to hit you. <laughs> More on boring? Maybe? Maybe? Not with the slides. <laughs> <laughs> the other point, uh, open source. Again, even if we say Firefox, even if we say Mozilla, it's still all part of this because they know we're not making things proprietary. We're thinking about open source. It's still important to say it because they can collaborate, they can uh, fix some bug by going on GitHub, they can uh, submit some, uh, some issue by going on Bugzilla, they can participate, they can learn the code, they can help us, they can help the platform. So no need for developers to wait that a company will make new feature, that a company will fix the bug. You can do it yourself as a developer, so it's really important. And just to come back about the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, that made me talk about it. Some people, when, we, when you talk about those elements and you talk about, hey, there is those web API, it's really cool, that give you access to the hardware, it's a really good thing, and you say this to developers, most of them, their first reaction will, say, will be, oh, so you are creating API that works just on Firefox OS. 
And the truth is that right now it's kind of true uh, because it's working on Firefox OS. But when you build those applications, that's going to work on Firefox for Android. That's going to work on Firefox for the desktop. But this is always around the Firefox ecosystem, the Mozilla ecosystem. What is good to tell them? It's, it's only the beginning. We work with the W3C to make sure that those APIs will be part of the standard. We already saw uh, some of them, I think, the, uh, or other people implementing them. If I'm not wrong, I think, I, I really need to verify this because every presentation I say, if I'm not wrong, uh, there's the battery status API. If you use uh, Chrome Canary, so the kind of nightly build of uh, Chrome, you can use that API. So they already implemented this. So we're starting to spread those APIs elsewhere. And if the standard change at some point, and it does not reflect what we have in the Firefox OS, we're going to change Firefox OS to reflect the standard. Because we don't want people to build Firefox OS application. We want people to build open web application. We want people to build web application or web games. So really important to talk about those points. It's important also to say, hey, Firefox is new. It's still really, I think, in my own opinion, it's still really big. Uh, we have more than five or six devices out there, and we're going to have more devices. Think about the ZTE Open, the Alcatel One Touch Fire. We still have the Geeks Phone Key on. Uh, we're going to have the Flame, so you, get it. you can pre-order right now. It's not available yet. I don't know when that's going to be shipped, probably really soon, but you can pre-order those devices. And there, are more, there is more devices. There is more form factor that will happen. So tablets, uh, Samsung or Panasonic talk about putting Firefox OS on TV. Uh, there is Foxconn that are, are working on a tablet, Alcatel working on a tablet. Uh, we just announced recently a dongle using Firefox OS. So there is a lot of things. So it's good to say that, hey, uh, we launched nearly one year ago, the first version, the first phone. But we did a lot of great things. And it's not the only thing, it's available right now in 15 countries, and we're going to have India soon. It's pretty cool. So it's coming, and only in one year. Again, this is only the beginning. So there is a lot of people working hard to make Firefox OS available in more countries to have other devices. So you need to talk about those points for the only reason that you need to set the, the tone about credibility. Yes, it's a new platform, but we're really serious, and we're doing great things. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. If it doesn't make sense, you can say no. <laughs> so, which kind of developer you should talk to about Firefox OS? Web developers. Web developers? Which kind of web developers? Uh, make, make web apps. Make web apps? Yeah. Which make, technology? Uh, using, like, like normal HTML5, Node.js. Basically, web based application, something that you use on your browser. Okay, yeah. good. So, uh, the big brother, super bigger answer is every developer. So, every developer benefits about knowing about Firefox OS. Even if I'm not doing web technology, even if I don't plan to do any Firefox OS application, even if the phone is not available in my country, as an example, I'm, I'm in Canada, uh, thanks, uh, you, you're going to be the, uh, I'll, I'll be the, the time cup. Yeah. So, um, like, like an, an example, I'm in Canada, I'm in Montreal, uh, in Canada we have no phones available, you can buy them online, but I cannot go to the local store and buy one, it's not available. I still do talk about Firefox OS, because those people want to know about the technology. They may not build applications, some of them will do, some of them will port their application. Uh, I talk to Python developers, I talk to Ruby developers, and uh, even if they're not using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, they want to know what's going on in the industry. They want to know what's going to be the smartphone of the future. So it's really good to talk about every developers. But even better right now, because we're trying to grow the ecosystem, because we're trying to get more application. What's even better is to talk to every developers, but every developers who develop, oh my god, good typo, who develop for the web. I thought I'd fix that thing. So the people, as you said, the web developers. So instead of talking to all developers, Let's start to talk to web developers because they're the people that will have a bigger impact on our ecosystem. They're the people that may be able to build Firefox OS application. Even even better, talking to developers who use HTML, who use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, 
as you said, even, 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 even better. Talking to developer who use the web, who are building application using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, who already have an HTML application or game, either by using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or by using PhoneGap or Cordoba, because we have a support for PhoneGap or Cordoba. So for those of you that don't know, this is a framework uh, that seems a little bit meta, because this is a framework that uh, give you the opportunity to use HTML, CSS, JavaScript to uh, build the Firefox OS application. But if you just want to target Firefox OS, it does not really make sense. If you want to target multiple platforms, this is really great because you use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, a specific API from PhoneGap, and you're going to be able to uh, create with that application an application that will go on Firefox OS, on iPhone, on Android, on Windows Phone, on Blackberry, on many devices. So that will create native application for those platforms. So it seems a little bit, like I said, a little bit meta using an HTML uh, framework to create an HTML game that will run on an HTML platform. But if you want to target many platforms, that could be a great idea. So I told you at the beginning it's great to target every developer. It's good. But right now what we need in the platform, we need more applications. No, it's not true. We need more quality application, more quality game. And the word quality, quality, quality is super important. We're not chasing the numbers, but we still have to get the numbers because this is a marketing thing, this is a political thing, this is, no matter what it is, people are always saying, hey, how many applications do you have on the marketplace? Oh, good. Not as much as iOS, not as much as the Android marketplace. So we need to get those applications. We need to get the applications that people may miss. And by doing so, it's going to be easier for us. It's going to be easier for you as the people that we will talk to developers to go talk to what we call the uh, low-hanging fruit, so the easiest target. So, of course, I can talk to developers who do some Java. This guy or this girl may not create an application really soon for Firefox OS. I will have a lot more impact in my job if I talk to someone who already have an HTML application. So it's going to be a lot easier for that person to take that application and put it on the marketplace. Make sense? Yeah. So if you have to choose, like if you, if you start to do public speaking tomorrow and you have a chance to go talk to, I don't know, a Linux user group, as far as I like those guys, and you have an HTML user group, you probably want to go to talk to the HTML user group or the JavaScript user group. And if you have to, like, we all have a finite number of times, if you have to help people to develop their application or to port their application to Firefox OS, you should uh, prioritize people using PhoneGap, Cordova, if you know those technology, or uh, using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and those people that already have applications working in the browser. So Mozilla needs you. But you already know that. You're already part of this uh, Mozilla thing, Mozilla mission. You're already part of it. So, of course, if you're here, it's probably because you have some time to give to uh, Mozilla, some time to give to the mission, to help the mission reach the next level. And this is basically what you're going to need if you want to do what we're going to talk about during uh, that session. Uh, you need to like technology, so you're probably too young. So this is a pile of floppy disks. Uh, uh, how many of you knows that it was floppy? How many of you knows what is floppy disk? <laughs> how many of you knows what is a CD? <laughs> yeah, I'm so old. <laughs> so, uh, I would say, and, and let me know if I'm wrong, I would say to help Mozilla in a bigger picture, you don't really have to love technology. You need to love the web. You need to love the mission we have. To do what we do now, you need to love technology. You need to have that passion about technology. Because it's one thing being at home and coding and sending some patches and life is good doing some pull requests. It's another thing to be in front of people. It's another thing to go at events and talk with people. I don't have my, 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 my screen in front of me anymore as protection. I'm with people. I need to be able to share that passion. I love technology. I need to be able to share that, uh, that, that passion that I have about that technology. And it's what you need to be in that room. Are you passionate about technology? Yes. 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 I'm not yes. sure. Yes. <laughs> Janet is passionate about technology. <laughs> you are not. <laughs> so you need to have that passion. You need to be able to share that passion. 
But I don't get me wrong, being able to share that passion, you're going to learn about it. So at least you need to have the will to share the passion. You need to be excited about technology and you're going to learn how to share the passion. You're going to learn how to be in front of people and talk about technology and really try to uh, share those things. Do you love Mozilla? Yes. yes. That was a stupid slide. <laughs> <laughs> because, of course, you of need course. to love Mozilla. You need to love the web technology. You need to love the web. You need to be part of that mission. You need to love Firefox OS. And let me tell you something that will maybe sound wrong. You don't have to use Firefox OS daily to love Firefox OS. You may already have an Android. You may already have an iOS. That could be totally good for you. Firefox OS is a super good OS. We have awesome phone. It's not a phone for everybody also. Like Android, it's not a phone for everybody. Like Windows phone, is not a phone for everybody. So let's be true to yourself. But you still need to love the platform. You still need to love the idea of the event. You still need to love how it's made, how it's done. So this is really important if you want to be able to share that passion with people. <laughs> I like my slides. Huh? <laughs> you, it's, this slide is kind of true and not true at the same time. You don't need to be the expert. But you need to have some knowledge. Of course, if I'm in front of you and I'm talking and I'm doing a presentation, a technical presentation about Firefox OS, and I don't know how to build a Firefox OS application, do you think I will be able to reach my goal? Uh, uh. Hello, talking to you. <laughs> I can do the pool. <laughs> I'm really not able to do this. <laughs> I tried, I tried. So <laughs> you don't need to be the expert because there is no way you're gonna know everything. There is no way I know everything. There is no way Christian Elman know everything. There is, even if he pretends to. There is no way <laughs> someone's gonna tweet, hey, code poet, Fred said that. It's okay, I already told him. There is no way Robert Diamond, you know, will know everything. Uh, nobody knows everything about the platform. The thing that is important is that uh, you're able to help people and you have some knowledge that you can share with people. Make sense so far? Yes. Yes? Awesome. Good. So we need you. We need you to help us. Uh, so there is something that we call a community evangelist. Do you know basically what it is? It's, it's basically like uh, doing what I do. It's basically trying to inspire people, trying to enable developers to uh, be successful in the platform. And now, uh, there is a lot of resources put on Firefox OS. That does not mean that we put away the other project. That does not mean that we're not working on Firefox anymore. The only thing is that Firefox OS is new. We need all the manpower, the woman power to make that platform worse, to reach more people, to educate developers about it. So the role of my role, the role of a community evangelist, is basically split in two parts. This is two parts. <laughs> so the first part is uh, you need to inspire people. You need to be in front of them, talk to events. There's many ways you can help us to inspire people, but you need to really inspire people. Is it clear? You need to inspire people. <laughs> so I would say it's kind of 25% of the job. You need to get people excited about the technology. There's another part. It seems bigger. But both are really important. You need to enable those developers to be able to work on the platform, to help with the platform, to create Firefox OS application. So let's see what the first one means, inspiring people. This is a simple word, but there is a lot of meanings behind it. So I created what I call the inspiring equation. I don't know why nobody loves math. Do you love math? Yeah. yeah. OK, so you love math. So it's why I put the equation. <laughs> I, I know that everybody in the room would love math. So, uh, <laughs> It's sharing your passion about technology. I told you, I'm going to repeat this quite often. What is the... That's okay. <laughs> I have your permission? <laughs> Thanks. So, yeah. so, <laughs> I love you guys. Uh, so, the important word here, that word I will say quite often with my French accent, is passion. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my God. I'm tired. <laughs> Sharing your passion about technology. Plus, exciting developers about cool stuff. Firefox OS is pretty amazing. Yeah. Because quite often, 
When are you going to have a discussion with customers? When are you going to have a discussion with developers? When are you going to have a discussion with everybody about mobile application? It would always be about, hey, should we build the native application or should we build the web application? And most of the time, people will say, oh, we should build native application because uh, I have a lot more API that will give me access to the hardware because HTML5 is so slow, like native application would be way much faster. Did you have already those discussions? Yeah, kind of yeah, feedback? I love yeah, it. look at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love those discussions also. So uh, this is usually what happened. So now we need to show to people that we can build amazing stuff that's going to be fast, that's going to give us the API that we need as developers to create cool stuff. So Firefox OS is really what I call cool technology, cool stuff. And you need plus showing them the benefits of using this technology. How many times did you went to a conference, watch a presentation, the speaker was amazing, uh, the demo we did was super interesting. It was like the leading edge technology you ever saw in, in the last year. It was awesome. But you were not really able to use that technology at work because it's not something you could use. Uh, it was something too new. Uh, the presenter only showed you like, oh, the cool stuff, but he did not really show you how to use it or what were the benefits. So it's really important because there's like that, oh, I'm sharing my passion. Oh, I'm really excited about, oh, this is cool stuff. But how can day to day I can use those things? Why should I build Firefox OS application? So really important to do this. So everything together should give you the inspiring developers. Make sense? You like that equation? Yeah. yeah. You're going to learn this by heart. <laughs> Everybody, tomorrow we'll come back at 6 a.m. and we're going to know. <laughs> so, how many of you want to give talks? Yeah. Why do you want to give talks? It's so much fun. It's so much fun. Yeah. What is fun? Talking. Talking? <laughs> I heard you. I heard you. I can stop talking. Why do you want to do a presentation? Share to share what you know. <clears throat> to inspire others. To inspire people. Oh, he was listening. No, it's good, it's good. To connect and get to know what people think about you. Oh, wow. This is the first time I heard this, but it makes total sense. Uh, actually, it makes really total sense. It's to connect with people, uh, get some feedback, learn about other people. So there is many reasons, and every reason you have is a good reason. But you need to think about, this is probably one of the most powerful ways to inspire people when you give a talk. When you're in front of the people, that can be challenging, that can be stressful. But this is one of the best way to inspire people because it's a relation like one to many. But now, by doing that, that talk, I hope, I'm going to inspire you to help us to reach more developers about Firefox OS. So I'm able right now to inspire that many people in the room. So it's really a powerful tool to inspire people. As I said, that helped me to reach many more people because it's totally fine to have those one-on-one -on -one relationship. And when I go to a conference, I'm going to talk during the break with one of you. And it's nice. We, we connect together. Uh, we took a relationship to the next level because it's quite different from like being in front of stage and just... So, uh, so, uh, seeing the uh, audience, then having those one-on-one -on -one relationship. But when I do one-on-one, -on -one, I'm just talking to one person. When I do one to many, of course, it's obvious, I'm going to talk to more people. So it's really interesting. It can be done at different level. So you don't have to just think about conferences. I'm going to talk more about where you can start to speak. But sometimes, the only thing we think about is, oh, if I want to start speaking, I need to be at that conference. You're going to have GS2 in September. I need to go there. I need to speak there. Yes, you, sh you should, but there is other ways, there is other places you can start to speak. And I really like what you said before. Uh, it was really uh, altruist. It was really about like helping others. But there was also a lot of benefits for you. When you're on the stage, you are the person that people look at. You are the expert. You are a new connection for those people. So people, that helps you to grow your network. It's really important when you think about school, when you think about work. That helps you to create those connections. If you are a freelancer, you start your own business, that's going to help you to acquire some customers. That's going to help you to put this. You can put this, put this on your resume. That's going to help you to get a new job. Because by doing public speaking, you get some skills. 
that employers are looking for. So there's something, Christian probably told you about this, but uh, if you were there, but there is something called the uh, hard presentation. Did I change Presentation, presentation hard. You, you did okay. change it. I didn't know. <laughs> was, was so the <laughs> presentation art. Uh, we were talking about story before. Our presentation is a story. This is a story. To inspire people, you need to tell a story. So I don't know if you're going to see real well the colors when I change this, but it's not important. Just listen to me. So a typical presentation should be split in like three, uh, four to five parts. You're going to have the introduction. Following me right now? It's good? Yeah. So after the introduction, I have the presentation about my topic. And usually what you're going to do, you're going to maybe talk about a challenge that people have, that developer have. Because, you know, when we were talking about stories uh, before, the stories that resonate more with you were the thing that you were able to identif identify yourself to those stories. You were knowing what the people was feeling. I had a discussion with uh, my friends for that story, and one of those was talking, oh, yeah, I was part of that Modulo thing, but I didn't really start to help until someone explained to me that there is more than Firefox. And, and the other person was like, oh, this is so true. Like People always think that it's only about Firefox, but there are so many other things. So that person was related to that story, and this is how uh, that story was good for me. Uh, usually there is like the big part of the content, the big thing you want to put in the face of the attendee, what is really important for them, what is the main topic you want to talk about. You can split this in two parts also, and you're going to have the conclusion. So when you take it, so it, it, it seems simple, but it's really important, because the graphics that you may not show because of the color, it's like a mountain. So you start, you tell your introduction, the presentation of your topic and, and you, you, like the big thing you want to talk about, the topic you want to talk about, and you continue with the topic, but maybe you would think it's not less exciting, but you already did the big splash before. So you continue with your content and maybe some resources and the conclusion. So you need to like really excite people, and it doesn't mean you don't you don't excite people at the end. It's just you need to like go to the benefit, go to the more uh, things that they know how to use it. So when it comes to Firefox OS, a typical presentation that I'm usually doing when I'm uh, talking about Firefox OS, of course, I have my introduction. And please, this is a pet peeve of mine, but if you're doing public speaking, introduction does not mean that you need to speak about you for 10 minutes. <laughs> so, no, no, but so many developers do this. And, and as far as I like the, uh, the presenter, so many presenters do this. As, as, as far as I like those guys or those girls, it's okay. I'm there for the topic. I'm there for what you want to show me. So, like, 30 seconds is pretty good. You know what I said? Uh, you, you remember what I said at the beginning? Hey, I'm Fred, technical evangelist. I wouldn't have to explain technical evangelist if it was more common, so I'm just doing a quick explanation of what I do. Twitter, link, next. You're not there to listen about my life. You're there to listen about the topic that I want to talk to. So I have the introduction. After this, I'm going to introduce Firefox OS. I'm going to come back on those points. I'm going to show you what I'm, I'm doing usually. I'm going to talk about web APIs. I'm going to talk about web activities. So still, I'm still, this is a main part of my topic. But yes, I already talked about web APIs. So web activities is still important, but I'm starting to like go to the end of my presentation where I'm going to talk about resources. So where they can find more information because most of the time, you usually have 45 minutes to talk about Firefox OS. I would be able to talk about Firefox OS for one full week. So in 45 minutes, I have to just go into high-level stuff really quickly, interest people, do some demo, and this is basically what I do. So this is a copy of uh, the latest slide I used uh, the last time I talked about Firefox OS. So this is my introduction part. So we always come back to the present presentation part. So of course, my opening slide, the story that I talk at the beginning is always uh, a little bit what I said to you. You know, you have that discussion with the customers. It's always about native and HTML. And I say, hey, okay, uh, HTML5 is great, but it's sometimes it's a little bit fake. When you think about mobile application, it's a little bit true. I don't have all the features I want. I don't have all the tools I want. And sometimes uh, HTML5, as far as I like it, feel a little bit fake. And I'm talking about the fact that, hey, there are so many devices out there. Their common point is the browser. 
So most of those devices, the common point to access the internet is the browser. So now, let me tell you about what I call the future of HTML5, the next version of HTML5. It's not, I don't want to sound pretentious, but I want to set the tone that what we're doing is not just for Firefox OS. It's really to help the web to reach that next level, help HTML5 to have more APIs. So this is basically my introduction. 10 minute ish way less than that. Just to introduce, hey, this is what I'm going to talk about today. I want to tell you about Firefox OS and what is great with HTML5, what we do with HTML5. And I want to show you that it's not true that HTML5 is not good to do mobile application. So I set the tone to my presentation. After this, because so many people don't know about Firefox OS, and this is one thing, never assume that people know about that technology. No matter which technology you're going to talk about, don't assume people know about that, that technology, except if you go to a conference, you submit your abstract, and you specifically put something like, hey, you absolutely need to know this, that, X, Y, Z to come to my presentation. And even that, people don't read really abstract most of the time. So they come to your presentation, they were expecting something else just because they didn't read your presentation abstract, but still. So I need to introduce Firefox OS. Why? Because of the credibility stage. I want people to know that it's a real platform. It's not just a dream anymore. That dream come true. So we have a new device. We talked about it two years ago. We launched the first device one year ago. It's built with the web. It's open source. I really like that icon on YouTube everywhere. It's <laughs> <laughs> open No, I'm not going to do that. Neither, neither <laughs> That's not going to work. You're going to leave that room. Uh, I'm talking about some facts. Uh, where did we launch, how many devices we have, what are the devices that will come after. Uh, this is kind of user-centric, but again, this is to set the tone about the fact that Firefox OS is a serious business. We are working hard to make it happen, and it's happening right now. Uh, I talk about ZD Open because uh, at that presentation, that was the only device that you were basically able to buy mostly everywhere on the web, but it's pretty inexpensive. I talk about a marketplace. It's not because it's HTML, CSS, JavaScript that I don't have a marketplace. And this is important because developer may not care too much about it, but users care. This is the first place that developer uh, users will go to look for uh, their application when they get to buy the Firefox OS device. Or at least users that know it is a smartphone that will go for the application. It's important to tell developers that it's an open platform. We don't force anybody to submit their application to marketplace. We highly suggest developers to do so because this is the first place user will go. But we don't force anybody. We don't charge you to be developers. You know, there's other platforms where you need to buy, like to pay $99 per year uh, just to be able to submit your application. We don't do this. It's really important because this is an advantage for developers to know about it. Talking a little bit about the adaptive ad search, so everything.me that is on the platform. Uh, I'm talking about what is a Firefox OS application. I can use what I call vanilla HTML, so no framework, nothing, just basic HTML, CSS, JavaScript. I can do a lot of great things without frameworks. You should try. I can also uh, use web API and web activities, but at that time, I did not talk about those yet. I just told them, hey, you can do this. Uh, you can use mostly any frameworks you like. At least, if it's a JavaScript framework or something for CSS, HTML, you can use them. I'm talking about the manifest file. Because this is basically what makes a web application of a web game a Firefox OS application. Hey, this is a JSON file. This is basically the description of my application with some permission and everything you need to tell Firefox OS that it is an application. And I'm doing a demo. A demo on how it's easy to port an HTML application to a Firefox OS application. I will continue those slides, and if I have time, I will show you some of the demos I do, so you can have an idea. I would at least do one, but we'll see after how many time, because I used to talk a lot. So we'll see after. Yeah, so you could 10 minutes or so. That's, that's I'm going to talk way much faster. <laughs> so the second part, it's really important. I'm going to talk about, about a web API. Again, you need to always find a good mix between the slides and the demo. When you're doing a technical talk, when you're doing other kind of talks, it's different. But I'm talking to a technical audience, they want to see demo, they want to see code. Uh, I'm not a big fan of like coding 
everything during the demo because people are not there to look me uh, type of my keyboard they're there to see something happening so uh, sometimes I'm going to use already application that I have sometimes that I'm going to copy and paste sometimes I'm going to type the demo it depends sometimes I'm going to be just code on the slide uh, so I try to talk about web APIs show them some examples the two examples that I show usually is the MBN light sensor so really great to show that hey I can access the MBN light sensor using JavaScript I can do the same thing with the battery status. So those are the things that you cannot access with HTML right now. Really important to say this, because you're talking about APIs that work right now on Firefox OS, and this is why Firefox OS is so exciting. Because you have access to part of the hardware on those phones that you don't have access with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript right now. So this is why Firefox OS is amazing. I'm talking about web activities. This is part of the web API, but this is great because uh, People need to know that there, those activities are there to help them do things like using a picture in their application, uh, adding a contact, making some phone calls, and uh, you always need to talk about the security issue. Because when I talk about Web API, if I come back, there is, uh, it's not on that slide, but there is the Certified API. For those of you that know Firefox OS, you cannot use Certified API. It's only for OEM application or uh, OS application. And in those API, there is the camera API, and people are usually afraid, oh my god, I cannot use the camera, what kind of phone or what kind of platform do you have? But there is the web activities with the pick activities that give you that opportunity. So I'm talking about those web activities. I'm talking about the fact that if you use web activities, your application will be used, you will be able to use your application on, a far, uh, on an Android device that will have Firefox. You can install Firefox OS application on an Android device that have Firefox installed on it. So this is good for developers because that gives that give them access to more users. And I finish my presentation with some resources. So there's some slides you see that I reuse in some presentation. So I'm talking about the Cordova phone gap. I'm talking about the programs that we have. I'm talking about the similar. It's easy to use. If I have more time, I'm going to do demo around the uh, developer tools. I'm talking about MDN. This, this is awesome. This is the resources. I'm talking about Stack Overflow. A lot of things that we're going to talk to do where you can help. And I finished my story, because I started the story about, hey, HTML is not that good as we thought, but hey, let me show you a good story, and oh, web API, and web activity, and this is a bunch of resources, so this is the boring part, but still, you need to talk about those resources, and hey, by the way, now that I showed you that HTML5 is amazing, now that I showed you that Firefox OS is the platform of the future, but the platform of the future now, you can use it now, why don't you think about Firefox OS the next time you want to build an application? Why don't you port your actual HTML and or PhoneGap application to Firefox OS? So always, always finish with something that take back your story from the beginning to the end and try to put a, a call to action. Like, hey, what do you want people in the room to do? It's good. You talk about Firefox OS, people will go to the next talk, to the conference, they will nearly forget a little bit about what you said, but no. Hey, I want you to build Firefox OS application. And if you do, send me an email. I want to be in contact with you. So if you have the time, this is a good thing to do. People will send you a lot of emails. But that will give you the opportunity to create that relationship with those people and really help them. So where can you start to speak? You can start at work. Do you know what uh, those lunch and learn things, do you know what it is? Actually, uh, if it does not exist at your work, you can introduce this. Basically, you can say, hey, to your colleague, I would like to show you some cool technology. Well, I would like to show you some nice feature that I had somewhere. I would like to show you a cool open source project. I would like to show you a little bit about Firefox OS. That could be 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, depending on the time you have. People usually bring their lunch, they eat while you're speaking. But this is a great way to start because you speak to people that you already know. You can start at school. For those of you that are still at school, there are some clubs, there are some opportunity to do speaking at school. Think about it. Uh, you can, of course, go to conferences. Not all conferences will open their call to speakers to everybody, but most of them do this. So you just need to look at when is the next conference I would like to speak, when they're going to open the, the call for speaker, and basically you need to think about your topic. Create a title, create the abstract, so the, the small description about what you're going to talk about, and uh, you may be selected. So sometimes they're looking for experienced speakers, sometimes they're looking for beginner. There's even some conferences that give you the opportunity to 
do your first talk in a conference. And there's other uh, groups like the Toastmaster, uh, there is like any other group about speaking, any other user groups, it's a good way to start too. So if there is an HTML or a JavaScript user groups that meets monthly, that could be a great opportunity. Sometimes it's easier to get a speaking uh, opportunity, a speaking gig there, and of course it's less intimidating to, to talk to like 20 person or 30 or 50 per person than talking to 100, 200, 300, 400, depending on uh, how big the events are. So when you think about public speaking, don't just think about conferences. There are many ways to do this. So Mozilla can help you. Uh, we can help you, we can train you, help you to train yourself to do public speaking. If you think you want to do public speaking, uh, you're creating your slides, send me an email, I can review your slides, uh, we can do a Skype call or whatever call, and I can, you can do the presentation to me, I can give you feedbacks, uh, there's other people on the team who do this also. Uh, we can help you to find speaking gig in your city. So we got a lot of requests. Uh, I don't know how many from India, but we got a lot of requests about uh, people that want Mozilla to be at their event, that want Mozilla to speak at your event. So if you have an expertise, you want to talk about a topic, we can help you to uh, put in relationship with those people. Even in some cases, we may also pay for travel and expense. So this is really some cases, we need some approval, there's a long process, blah, 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 but this is something possible if you want to go speak in a university and you would be the person of choice to do this, this is possible. And we can add you to a pool of speakers we have. Uh, you can also do some requests in the Bugzilla. I'm, we're gonna talk about it later, but there is uh, a specific Bugzilla section for uh, speaking opportunity. If you're organizing a conference, if you know user groups, if you want to talk somewhere, if you know there's an event that you think Mozilla should be there, you can fill those requests. So yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is that? <laughs> this is where I take over. <laughs> so, um, we, I, this is brand new, just started like this week, but uh, we ha have created a group on mozillians.org called Moz Speakers. And this is a curated group, but it's intended to be people who are interested in doing public speaking about topics related to Mozilla. Uh, and so the requirements for joining this group are you need to add your speaking interest to your mozillians.org profile so that somebody going and looking at it can see, oh, this guy, you know, likes to talk about game development, or this person, uh, you know, talks about, I don't know, this JavaScript framework, whatever. Uh, what you're ex basically put your expertise in what you want to talk about. And add a link to something that tells us about your existing speaking activity, whether you use Lanyard or SlideShare or something else. Maybe it's a sub-feed of your personal blog, but we want to be able to go and see what have you done before, um, just to get a sense of your history. So if you have those things on your profile and you request to join the group, then you'll be added to the group. This is just so that you know we don't get a million people joining the group and then we don't know anything about their actual speaking act activity. Um, so this is, oh, so that's, so the, the first three bullets are about mozillians.org group. And then also on Yammer, we have a group for people who want to discuss about speaking for Mozilla. It's so, case sensitive. And it's case sensitive. And is and, the I or uh, That's a damn good question. Um, it's an I because the <laughs> capital L. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know. Try both ways. Small L because the small L is also the same. No, I think right, it's a. I think it's a help. Is is it an uppercase I? And it might be because it has more space around it than the lowercase. Okay. <laughs> Try both ways. Sorry about that. Um, but so if you're if you're not aware of how many people are. are on the Mozilla Yammer? Okay, so for those who didn't raise their hand, Yammer is basically a private social network. Um, so it's kind of like Facebook, but for a contained group. So we have a Yammer that people who are vouched Mozillians can join. And, uh, and that's where we share a lot of information about what's going on at Mozilla. And there's, like on Facebook, you, there are groups, 
there is a group for speakers. So again, you know, and uh, we're going to be using this for things like, hey, you know, we got a request for somebody to speak at such and such event. You know, anybody want to, you know, uh, uh, you know, take that on. So we're um, and you know, sharing tips and tricks and whatever else. So those are, I think that's okay. These were supposed to be. That's These the are sub bullets of this one, <laughs> and this is a sub bullet of this one. So join the over and then join the speakers group. Okay. That's a one. Okay, it's a one. That's good to know. I need to use a different font. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me test this. Yeah, this is a one. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Put, put that in like. Yeah. Oh, just. There you go. Oh my God! Sorry about this. I, I test those by copy and paste. And so I think that's it for that slide. Okay. Well, but I can I can just keep right. going. Um, so. Uh, there is, I, I think we're going to have the URL for this yeah, in the resources, the last, yeah. but basically if somebody, um, we have this event request form in Bugzilla for some, if somebody wants to get a Mozilla speaker for their event or they want to get sponsorship for their event, or both. Um, and so this is where a conference organizer would go to say, hey Mozilla, you know, can you send us a speaker? So, or if you know about an event and you want to make sure that they get uh, Mozilla involved, you would tell them to, uh, or, or you could just, you could fill out the request for them, either case, but just be aware that this is the, the, uh, the entry point to the process for getting speakers and sponsorships for developer events. Um, okay, blogging. That's yeah, you. so, uh when we talk about inspiring developers, uh, we talk about speaking, but uh, there's another way uh, called blogging. So how many of you have a blog right now? Wow, this is pretty cool. Is it uh, like technical blog? Is it uh, personal blog? Is it, I don't know, gaming blog, food blog? Okay. It's a mix and match. Perfect, it's the same thing for me. So. Uh, for those of you that don't have blogs, uh, blogs are a great way to inspire developers when you write blog posts about the technical things you did, about some Firefox OS project, about just Firefox OS, about some bug fix you did for the project, about cool features. So uh, if you want to teach people about something, writing blog posts is a great way to do so. So of course you can write your own blog post and this is what most of you are doing right now. But there is another opportunity for you. How many of you know the Axe blog? So those of you that did not raise your hand, shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true, it's not true, it's not true. There is no way to know everything, there is so many. There's so Nobody many web knows everything. Yeah, there, yeah, I told you. There's so many things that they call on the web, web pages or websites. So uh, the Muslo Axe blog, you can access this by the way on axe.muslo.org. This is a technical blog post, a, blue, a technical blog that we have at Muslo. It's basically run uh, by uh, Robert Nyman, so by the uh, technical evangelist team. But everybody at Muslo had the opportunity to write for the Axe blog. So if you have a technical blog post, because this is, I told you, it's a technical blog, so everything around Firefox, Firefox OS, any, any Mozilla project, mostly around HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Firefox OS. So if you have any idea of something technical you would like to share with people, we're looking for original blog posts. So we're not, double, uh, we're not posting what you already post on your blog, but if you have an original idea, something that you did not write about already, you want to put it on the Xbox, let me know. Let know Robert, if you, uh, if you know Robert Nina, and uh, or let me know. I will be more than happy to help you to create a blog post. What is great again is that it's a little bit, it's a little bit like public speaking. 
we have a really good numbers of readers, so that is good exposure for you. It's good exposure for your expertise, it's good exposure for you. When you write a blog post, you're gonna have your bio on the right, so you can put a link to your website, to your Twitter account, to whatever you want. So this is a good way to share your passion with other people, to inspire other developers, but also, as I say, great exposure for you. You can so put, this on your, put this on your resume. I wrote a blog post for uh, the Mozilla blog. This is, uh, this is a really good way to inspire developers. We also have uh, the Firefox apps and apps newsletters. Because some people don't like blog posts, because some people don't uh, use RSS, some people prefer email, and it's not the same kind of topics. It's mostly for developers. It's really news about uh, what's happening, what is cool in the Firefox OS world, what is cool in the uh, Mozilla world. It's a technical newsletter. It's mostly pointer to some uh, to some documentation on NDN, to some blog posts on the X blog. So this is pretty good. We feature also some Firefox OS applications application or games that are pretty good that we want to showcase what people do we want to get some exposure to developers so if you have any idea of topics that would be nice to share on that mailing list of that newsletter please uh, it's a newsletter let us know we're gonna have the link at the end of the presentation so you can subscribe also you will see it's it's a monthly newsletter pretty interesting so those are the thing you can do to inspire developers. So just before we do the speaker idol, I will just do a small demo because I want to show you that, uh, you know, this morning we had that thing called a Helmo. It's kind of a camera to do some presentation. You don't need this to do a presentation. Actually, I never use those things. I have one right now. And as you see, it's really not connected to my computer. So uh, what you need to do a presentation, you can use the simulator. So for those of you that don't know, I can go on Firefox. I already have the tools I know. I go to web developers. Oops. Go to web developers. I have something called the App Manager. In my case, uh, I need to install the simulator. If I don't have those, uh, they're add-on for Firefox. They're really easy to install. If I click Start Simulator, you're gonna see that I have a couple of versions there, so I can choose the version I need to do my demo. So this is the case. This is in case that I don't have. Uh, I have too many. Too many. Uh, Simulator, the cancel button just goes under. But uh, this is in the case that I don't have any phone to do demo. What is great is to show the power of the phone, uh, the power of web API on a real device also. So if I click cancel, what I'm going to do, I have my, uh, my phone here, Geek's phone. I just need a USB cable. Of course, I need to be sure on OS X that's going to work uh, mostly uh, uh, like with no anything else to do. On Windows, you're going to have to install uh, the drivers for the phone. On Linux, you're going to have to play a little more to make it work. But we have all the information on the Axe blogs on NBN. It's there. If you're looking for something specific, let me know. I need to activate remote debugging. But once I do this, I connect my phone to my computer. And I have a new option here. Uh, this is full key on. This is how my phone is detected. So I'm going to click on it. And that's going to connect to my phone. So now this is kind of boring because you don't see what is on my phone. So what you can do, you can install an application called Droid, Droid at Screen. It's a Java application, but it's free. Uh, it's working with Android devices, but it's working also with Firefox OS devices. So what is great is that in that case, I'm going to be able to show what I have on my screen. The only thing you need to warn developers that the frame, work, the frame rate of that tool is really slow. So it's not Firefox OS that is slow like this, it's really the rate for screen. You will see that it's kind of like click on things and it's really more slow on the, on the, uh, on the computer. So now I have, uh, I have my simulator, uh, not my simulator, but I have uh, the visual of my phone on the screen. So it's really good to do my, uh, to do my demo. So quick demo that I'm going to do. This is the first demo that I usually do because I want to show uh, developers that it's really easy to uh, port their application. So how many of you know uh, the project to do MVC? So this is, yeah, there's, thanks, there's one person too. So uh, this is on GitHub, this is open source, this is a bunch of people from Google, different company, different developers that said this is pretty cool. We have so many frameworks in JavaScript, but it's hard to know which framework choose, uh, you need to choose when you do your project. So to create a project that replicate a to-do list, but using different framework, using different architecture. So I'm using the one using Ember GS here. So it's a small to-do list, nothing complicated. Uh, Mozilla camp, uh, test, and again, okay, this one is done. 
I did the test. I don't want to be at mouse cam. This is removed. This is a to-do list, simple to-do list. It's working in a browser. Uh, what I'm going to do, I have another uh, folder here called Firefox OS Starter. If I use uh, Sublime, I go there. Uh, it, this is uh, it's just because I'm lazy. And I heard so many people yesterday tell us that uh, they're lazy, so maybe you're lazy too. Uh, I don't want to code too, uh, too much in front of people because I can't do typo because it's boring to watch someone code. So I have that small project. And this is basically a boilerplate, a starter application that I created. So every time that I do a demo, every time that I start a new Firefox OS application, I just use this. This is kind of icons, MT CSS file, MT JavaScript file, it's just to start to create my application, but the most important part is my uh, my manifest file. This is basically what makes my application a uh, Firefox OS application. So I would be able to just create that manifest file and add everything I do to create a Firefox OS application. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy and paste the content of my Ember GS folder to my Firefox OS starter. I'm going to replace all the file, and basically what I just created. Uh, what I did, it was more complicated than that, but I just put the manifest file to my Ember GS example. It's just because I didn't want to type everything. It was easier for me when I do the demo because I want to spare some time to talk about my stuff. So this, the same result will be there. You just need to explain to people what you did in my case. So now I have a Firefox OS application. And the developer will look at me and say, yeah, okay, thanks. You just copy and paste the file. Like, do I need to trust you? So you need to show them that, hey, yes, I created the Firefox OS application. So I go in my App Manager. If you don't know App Manager, I will not take too much time right now, but you can talk to me. It's basically the tool you need to create application, Firefox OS application. So I'm going to go into my desktop, Firefox OS starter. I'm going to add that application to my App Manifest, and I'm going to push that application to my phone. I'm just going to be sure that my phone is open. It was a visual. Where is my, uh, there we go. I'm going to push my application to the phone. So you're going to see that yellow icon that I created. It's basically the logo of my blog. I was too lazy to create something else. I'm really lazy too. So this is my Firefox OS application. So if I click, oh, it's true. If I click on my phone, <laughs> if I touch, my, that happened all the time. I will have my two list. So I have a Firefox OS application. And, and still same thing, mouse cam or what? Oh. <laughs> All the time. And you know when that happened, you're like, oh my god, my demo's not working. Like, there is a trouble. And you just realized, oh no, I was playing on the phone. So let's do a task called Fred, because we need to make Fred learn uh, how it's working. I should do this in the demo. So uh, actually, this is my Firefox OS application. It's working in my phone, but it's probably the best application you ever saw, no? <laughs> Probably not. And this is why I'm making that demo usually. Because I want to tell people, you, you, don't have, you, you don't want to lie to people. Yes, it's easy to create a Firefox OS application. Yes, it's easy to port an HTML application to Firefox OS, but you have some work to do. In that case, because I did not, like, the to-do MBC did not uh, use some responsive technique, it's kind of a boring application because I need to scroll up, scroll down, and zoom in, zoom out. That's not going to be a super good experience for the user. Worse than that, I have no integration with the platform whatsoever. That could be good for some games, that could be good for some things, but maybe that could be great to have some push notification. Maybe that could be great to uh, use the battery status to be sure that uh, if I'm running out of the battery, I want to be sure that those to-do will be safe. So this is not a super like, oh, wow, example, because people are like, ah, your application is not so good. But I make a point. I made a point with those things. It's that it's easy to do so, but you need to adapt to the phone. You need to adapt to the platform. You need to do some integration. So just to show you, if you want to do a demo with a real device, a USB cable, bury that screen, you have everything you need. You don't need that helmet thing. You don't need a webcam. You don't need... Of course, you need to deal with the refresh rate, but if you're not doing like a game demo, it's pretty good. If you don't have a phone, no worries. You can do this on simulator. Uh, it's, sometimes it's even better because the performance would be way better, but it's good to show on a real device also because you can show those web API that use part of the hardware. Okay. So we talked about before about the, the two parts of evangelism being inspiring and enabling. And 
inspiring is getting people excited about using the technology, and then enabling is helping them actually do it. Um, and so, you know, there's kind of uh, you know a, a curve that happens. Somebody hears about some cool new thing like Firefox OS. They get really excited. They start to try it out. They hit a roadblock. They run into another problem, and then their excitement goes like this. And um, this is bad. So we want to, you know, help them get past these roadblocks so that they can actually complete something and uh, and have success. So that's what enabling is about. So you know, this is the inspiring part. This is the enabling part. Uh, hello. <coughs> oh, helps if I put push the actual button. No. What is going on? It's good. It's working. Oh. And, uh, it's just not show. It on this screen. It's not showing. Okay. Well, I just showed you all the buttons. But anyway, yes. Yeah, so we continue to inspire people. We take them from excitement to actually doing stuff. We give them concrete tools to be successful and help them through. So again, you know, getting them past their, their roadblocks. Um, some things that Mozilla does in developer relations is giving people phones if they will create apps. And we've run several instances of this program. Right now, we're doing it for people who have Cordova apps and we want them to, to make them for Firefox OS. Um, so if you have an HTML5 app, you can get a phone. Uh, or a Cordova. OK, that's Cordova. Yeah. <laughs> you have a Cordova yeah. app, you can get a phone. Um, so we call that apps on a flame, which is very cute. But uh, we also, another thing that we do to enable people is answer their questions on Stack Overflow. So Mozilla is sponsoring tags for Firefox and Firefox OS so that we know, you know who, is, who is asking questions with these tags. And then we try to find them help. And you know, if somebody has an obscure question, we find the developer who knows the obscure answer to that. Um, so this is something where, again, community can participate. You know, go to, to these tags on Stack Overflow and look for you know, things where you may know the answer. Um, this is also, if you do want to, to go out and speak about Firefox OS, this gives you a really good idea of the problems that people are running into that they, maybe you can write a talk that addresses how to solve uh, Self-signed certificates, I don't know, whatever. Um, and I, I'm thinking about maybe doing a kind of like expert database that we can have. So if I, because I, I'm, I mainly manage that, that thing with uh, Jason Withers, me and our team, but there's many questions that we don't have the answer. So if there's other people in the room that have a certain expertise, we can like ask you, hey, there is that question, can you help us? Yeah. So, so this is a, a, a big kind of uh, untapped opportunity for community involvement. And then there's MDM. Um, and uh, Priyanka talked about this in the community building session. Um, and you know, this is something where you can contribute individually, or if you want to get people together, you can do an event focused on MDM. Um, or you can have an event focused on translation for MDM. And Priyanka mentioned that one of the questions that came up in her uh, her lightning talk was, well, do we really need localization for MDM? Uh, kind of the answer is up to you. You know, for a particular language, if you feel that it would not be, you know, there would not be web developers that would be, would prefer to read in that language, then don't need to translate that. But, you know, there's hundreds of languages in India, so I, I don't think that's going to be true for all of them. Yeah? One question. How much the regional uh, like localized contents are consumed from Hindi and do you have any data around it? Like how much in English, how much in other regional languages? And how much is in Europe or how much is in India or something? I'm sure that data exists, but I don't have it on the top of my head to tell you. Okay. <laughs> um, There's already a metrics with that. Yeah. 
Um, another thing to keep in mind is that people reading MDN may not be as well educated as you, may not be as fluent in English. And so particularly for tutorials and conceptual material, it may be more comfortable to read that in your native language than to be reading that in English. So you're dealing both with reading something in English that you're not entirely comfortable with and you're, le you're learning a new topic, uh, you know, a new concept. So, you know, in prioritizing what to translate, I would suggest focusing on tutorials and concepts before reference pages. Because reference pages are really more about reminding somebody of things they already know. And so that's, you know, perhaps less important to have in your native language. Uh, and then another way that you can help um, create, help, help enable local content, local apps, is by translating existing apps. So uh, Mozilla is sponsoring um, a site on, with TransFX where Mozilla community can help translate <coughs> um, existing Firefox OS apps. Um, and I, I think there are plans for, I mean, you know, you can do it for free for open source and we may be working on some arrangement, like if it's a paid app, we don't insist that you translate it for free, but I think that's still being worked out. But anyway, again, you know, tra helping translate apps enables there to be more uh, apps available in your particular language. If you are into, uh, you know, hacking on the guts of, of Firefox OS, it's open source, you can get involved in that as well. Um, we, there's also the Firefox OS boilerplate app, which is something that evangelists use for demos. It uses a lot of the uh, APIs, and so this is something that you can both use for demos and kind of pick and choose code to, to copy and, and put into another app. Uh, and of course, there you can always uh, submit bugs. Um, and another uh, initiative that Developer Relations has recently started is a feedback forum for Firefox developer tools. So this is a very specific thing. It's about Firefox developer tools, not Firefox in general, not Firefox OS in, in general, not Mozilla in general. I mean, it's true that basically if there is a Mozilla website with a text entry field and a submit button, people will put their support questions in there. But, <laughs> um, so this is something where you can, you know, see and comment on uh, ideas that other people have suggested or, or make your own suggestions. So, some resources that uh, we are, you know, that we have available for you as community evangelists. There's a new, brand spanking new, Mozilla Evangelist mailing list. So this is a public list. It's a Mozilla discussion forum. So it is a mailing list and a Google group and a news group um, for talking about all of this stuff. So uh, you, you know, we invite you to join that and uh, you know bring up whatever questions or discussions that you are interested in having about evangelism. It's, 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 it's so new that I didn't send an email yet, but the idea would be that's going to be a good place to, to ask questions, like Jan said, but uh, I'm going to try, uh, depending on my skill, to send once in a while like tips and tricks about how we can help contribute, about speaking. Uh, so feel free, yeah, of course you can send me a direct email, but we're going to have way more evangelists on that list, plus everyone else in that room and other people. So please feel free to uh, join, join this. Uh, we're going to send some tips and tricks and, and, and some interesting stuff about uh, evangelizing Firefox OS, mostly. Um, so there is a, also uh, a Mozilla Evangelism Reps Facebook group, so you're welcome to join this. And again, it's something where people share links and, and suggestions and so on. Um, it originally started as specifically people in the evangelism scene of the reps program, 
but we've kind of expanded that. So the name is still reps, but really anybody who asks to join the group, we, we let them join the group. And it's only if they do something stupid that we boot them out. Um, so yeah, there, there are people in this group that have nothing to do with Mozilla, but hey, they wanted to join, so we let them in. Um, and there are resources, again, under uh, the evangelism SIG of the REPS program. This is not restricted to REPS in any way. This is just where these resources happened to be placed. Um, so on Mozilla Wiki, Remo, SIGs, Evangelism, REPS is where you can find a boatload of stuff. We talked in the community building about different event types. Rostov talked about um, hack days, uh, yeah, app, yeah. Firefox OS app hack days. <coughs> Something that app, app, days. App, days. app days, yeah, those things. Um, Priyanka talked about MDN because she's run some MDN focused events. Another type of event that is at this point just an idea is a developer meetup in a box. And so this is to help people who want to host a regular developer meetup. And the idea is that we would provide content that you can use as the topic for a, a meetup, um, you know, giving you slides or an outline, some demo code, a demo script, and so on. You, as the host of the meetup, you still need to learn this stuff and be able to, you know, present it. But you don't have to do all of the work of developing all of that content. And we would put it on a GitHub repository so that it can be improved. People can add their own, and so on. So. What do you think about that idea? So we have been we have to do this for such a long time. Okay. Yeah. All right. I figured you would like it, but you know, I tried to ask the neutral question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and right now, before because we're going to start to do this, so uh, between now and the time that that's going to be available, if you want to give talk or looking for materials, send me an email. Send an email. No, actually, no. Send me, send me send an email to the mailing list. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we're going to give point to you to some slides, to some recording of our session, so that's going to give you a good start. Yeah, and part of the thinking here is there is already a bunch of really good content on the Hacks blog that we can just you know, add some more to, and you're, you know, you've got a, a topic, and you know that's good for a session. Okay. So, yeah. So what's in the box? Outline, code, demo. You know, discussion points, and maybe some other stuff too. So that's the basic. Um, so I do not have a short URL for this. <laughs> maybe it's a good thing. <laughs> but it is, it's case sensitive, so it has a capital F. I <laughs> believe. Um, so if you have ideas for topics, things you really want to see, either put them on the Etherpad or come talk to me. And, and uh, we'll, we'll make sure that you know, those get prioritized. Um, so we don't expect you to write down all of these links. Um, uh, we'll be making these slides available. But there's a bunch of stuff. So that's really cool. And that's the presentation part. We